Let's continue the series on motorcycle controls with the control that is probably everybody's favorite control on the motorcycle, the throttle. You know, as discussed last week, the brakes have the most power, but the throttle gets all the glory. There's even an international hand signal for revving the throttle, and it's understood in every nation. But the proper use of the throttle starts with the way we put our hand to the throttle. And I see a lot of riders out on the road making this mistake. Our hand and wrist placement going to the throttle is important because it can have a huge effect on our total stopping distance. Now many riders start with their wrist too high and when they go to the throttle, they start with their wrist in this upward position. While this feels comfortable to roll on the throttle from that position, it creates some problems when we roll off the throttle. First problem it creates is that because of our elevated wrist, our fingers are not in the correct position to reach for the front brake. Now I've seen riders who have to take their hand completely off the throttle and reapply the grip in order to reach that front brake. This might not be a big problem at normal stops, but it causes two big problems when the rider needs to stop quickly. First, it lengthens our total stopping distance by a considerable margin. At just 30 miles per hour, a rider is traveling 44 feet per second. So let's look at the impact that adjusting your brake hand has on your total stopping distance. So this time I'm going to start with my wrist in the incorrect position. It's going to be high. I'm going to approach the green cones at about 25 miles per hour. And I'll make a fairly aggressive stop like you would if a car pulled out in front of you. Notice how my poor wrist position affects my ability to efficiently reach out for the front brake. So let's grab one of those orange cones back there and mark our stopping distance. This time let's use a correct wrist position and see what difference it makes in our stopping distance. Just watch how more efficient my reach is for the brakes simply by having my hand in the correct position on the throttle. So what does that equate to in stopping distance? Well, let's take a look at it and find out. So in total, it shortened my stopping distance up by about 14 feet. That's only at 25 miles per hour. So if you're going 60 or 70 miles per hour, you can more than double the difference it's gonna make in your stopping distance. But another likely scenario is that the rider will inadvertently roll back on the throttle in an emergency if they try to get to the front brake quickly and they have that improper grip on the throttle. So let's demonstrate what that looks like. So let's say this is our throttle. A lot of riders come with that elevated wrist position. We'll put the front brake out here in front. They roll on the throttle. That feels normal when they're riding down the road. When they roll off the throttle, their fingers are in the wrong position. And in order to get their fingers around to the proper position, a lot of riders will roll back on the throttle in order to get their fingers out there. You see that a lot in a new rider class, if particularly when they get to the emergency braking portion of the course, they'll inadvertently roll back on the throttle trying to get to that front brake. But if you go with a nice flat wrist position, you roll on the throttle here, when you roll off, your fingers are in the proper position to reach out for that front brake. Another sign that your throttle application may not be buttery smooth is comes to light whenever you're riding with the passenger and the two of you are constantly bumping helmets into each other. Now this happens most often at shifts, but it also happens to adjustments to the throttle by the rider if that rider is not smooth with the throttle. The good news is becoming smoother with the throttle is something that we can train on in a parking lot. And here's a simple exercise to help you develop a smoother throttle hand that will help you keep your bike smoother and in balance out on the road, especially if you have a passenger, they'll thank you for not constantly banging heads into one another as you're going for a ride. On this throttle exercise, you'll keep the bike in first gear. You'll roll on the throttle initially the first 30% of the entire course, 
and then the last 70 percent you're slowly rolling off the throttle to become at zero throttle at the point where you stop the motorcycle so if you'll watch my uh, wrist and hands, we've got a few more examples of this exercise. Notice how it's almost imperceptible to see my throttle hand move. It's a very subtle movement uh, on the throttle, but it will really help you develop smoothness using the throttle if you practice this technique. So I hope you found this video helpful and got some tips on better application and better throttle control on your motorcycle. As always, you can become a member at mcrider.com slash member. You'll get access to the forums where we'll be discussing this and a whole bunch of other motorcycle-friendly topics. And you'll get access to the field guide where you'll have exercises that you can practice on on any open parking lot and using the field guide as your source and your training partner when you're out there practicing. Till next week, guys, it's Kent with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.